Hey guys, welcome to You Fix It Garage. This is video number two in a five part series that I'm doing over RV system brakes. In this video, we're gonna start down at the wheels and I'm gonna show you everything about inspecting and maintaining your brake system on your RV down at your calipers and rotors and brake pads. If you missed the first video about how to properly lift your RV and safely support it while you do this type of work, you can go back and watch that one now. Before I get started, I just wanna say that the brake system on your RV is a critical piece of safety equipment. And any maintenance done on it should be done so uh, by someone who's competent in performing it. So this video is provided for information purposes only. I suggest that you do your own research and you consult a professional if you're unsure about the proper way to maintain your brake system. All right, so here we are at the rear caliper. Uh, this is the, the right rear caliper on this motorhome. And I just want to point out the, the top part, and I'll illustrate this better here in a minute. This caliper is made to slide back and forth as the brakes wear and as they squeeze so that you get equal pressure on both sides of your, your brake disc. The problem with these, the way this is designed is that there's a very large contact surface between the, uh, the brake caliper and the holder here. And these motorhomes don't get driven a lot, so they sit, these two pieces rust together, and what you end up with is this, which is a brake caliper that will not move left or right. So now as your brake pads wear, they're gonna wear unevenly because you're getting more force from the piston on the inside than you are on this outer brake uh, caliper. So as the, as the outer brake pad wears, uh, the, the caliper doesn't slide over to accommodate that or to compensate for that. And so the majority of your braking force ends up being on the inside of your brake caliper, which the hydraulic pressure is gonna deform the brake caliper or push it over until it squeezes on the other side. And so you'll end up with uneven brake wear. All right, to so take the, the brake caliper off, uh, there's really only one bolt and it's right here. It is a number six uh, hex head. I guess that's what that's called, bit. And you take that out and then you're gonna have to drive this wedge out of here. And what you're driving out is a piece that looks just like this. this that's that piece right there and it has a spring on top of it. So this is driven in, usually too tight uh, and with no grease on it. Into that, the screws put in and then everything rusts together and your brake caliper will no longer move. So this has got to be driven out. We'll take this bolt loose and then use a small punch to drive that wedge out. right there and you can see this this surface right here the brake caliper should slide against and it also slides on the top of this spring and you can see how rusted up and rough that is uh, and there's no absolutely no grease on there so then it also has a friction point up here at the top uh, that is rusted so once you get that out of the way the brake caliper should come down and you should be able to rock it right off. All right, I got the great brake caliper pulled loose and let's get a hold of these brake pads and see what we got. So there, you can tell the difference in the thickness of these brake pads. And this brake pad, I don't know if it got hot or if it's just deteriorated, but it's actually kind of falling apart a little bit on the outsides. But those should be the same thickness. If that caliper is pushing the brake pads evenly on this disc, these are gonna be the same thickness. So what's keeping that from happening is all of this rust right here. Along this edge, underneath here, and then on the bearing surfaces of your, your caliper uh, mount right here. Can check so while you're down here you're going to want to check your calipers to ensure that they're not frozen up 
and I'll show how to do that. And uh, then you're going to want to replace the brake pads because you don't want to put uneven brake pads back on. All right, to check these uh, pistons in your caliper, you can use uh, a clamp um, or you can use a big pair of channel locks, a big pair of pliers. And a lot of people will just take the brake pad, set it in there backwards and depress them both. In other words, squeezing, squeezing on the entire assembly so that it pushes both cylinders back. I, in order to make sure they're just they're moving freely, I kind of like to just push one at a time. And usually if you push this one, it's going to push that one out. And then when I push this one, it's going to push that one out. And it lets me know that they're both moving in and out freely. Uh, and then I'll take the brake pad and put back on there and depress them all the way. So I'm just putting not real a lot of pressure on there. And you can see that that uh, pushed the other one out pretty, pretty easily. I'll put my channel locks over here so you can see. And now the other side is coming out. So I know both of these pistons are moving freely inside of there. And I don't have a, a frozen caliper. So the other thing that I could have, this is an 18-year-old vehicle, is I could have a restriction in this flex hose. And I'm going to replace the hoses on mine while I'm down here. They're only about $30 a piece. And uh, they're 18 years old. There was all kinds of gunk in this thing when I bled the lines. Uh, so I figure I'm down here. I've got the wheels pulled off. What's another $30 uh, to replace a part and ensure that I don't have any restriction inside of those lines? So I'm going to do that. But if you're not going to do that, uh, the way to check that is just put your brake pad across both pistons and then try and depress both of them. And you can see it's much harder, a lot harder on this one to depress them both than it is just one. And I know that I know that the pistons are moving freely. So that makes me wonder if I don't have some type of a restriction in my brake line that's uh, preventing the, the free flow of fluid, or at least the backwards flow of fluid through the line. So I think it's probably a good thing that I'm that I'm replacing those lines. I'm going to replace these lines and I'm going to replace the uh, the center line in the middle on top of the axle. Reference. This is the, the back calipers and the front calipers. The back calipers I haven't cleaned up yet. And you can see all the gunk that's in that rail right there and how rusted up it was. How rusted up here. And then the ones I've cleaned, they're nice and shiny and smooth. And so they're going to slide a lot easier. Now, just cleaning these with a wire brush, uh, it'll work. And if you grease it up, it'll slide for a little while. But it's still going to have rust in there. And that rust is going to hold moisture. And when your RV sits for a month or so, this is going to lock back up and stop sliding. So take yourself. Uh, this is just a five-gallon paint stirrer. And I wrapped 220 sandpaper around it. And once I get done with the wire wheel on here, I'll take a wire wheel and I'll clean all this off and get all of the, the loose rust off. And then I'm going to take this 220 sandpaper, wrap tightly around this paint stirrer, and I'm going to polish those. And then when I get done with that, I'm going to take some 440 and I'll polish them again. I'll do the same thing on the mount that's attached to the motorhome. When I grease these up and attach them back, they're going to slide perfectly fine. Now they don't move much, granted, uh, very little at all. But when they, when as those brake pads wear, I do want them to be able to move, and and so this is going to ensure that that happens. I didn't really talk too much about it uh, because these are pretty simple replacing brake lines. Uh, you know, you just disconnect it and replace the others. But uh, you've got a flexible brake line on each caliper at the rear. And then over top of the pumpkin right there, there's a flexible brake line that goes up uh, to a junction uh, on the frame up there. And then at the front, down here at the front of the RV, you've got flexible 
brake lines that go to each caliper at the front. And this thing's been sitting here for a little while because, uh, because I've been waiting on parts and I've got a little surface rust. Um, I'm gonna throw up uh, the part numbers. The part numbers for these are, are all different. So you got a right and a left front, um, the backs, I think the back two right and left are the same and then the one in the middle is different. But I'm gonna put up the part numbers and where I purchased these from. I'm also gonna put up the part numbers for the brake calipers, uh, not the brake calipers, the brake pads uh, that I put on here. And uh, that way if you gotta do this job, you'll be able to order the parts. Okay, so I got the brake calipers cleaned up and I got the mounts cleaned up across here, uh, sanded down real good all the way to 400 grit. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, use some of this brake caliper grease. Uh, it's brake, brake and caliper grease. Um, I just got it at O'Reilly Auto Parts. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grease all of these areas where the slides contact and then on my caliper, I'm going to grease that slide there and the slide across the top here. And then my wedge or my retainer and the spring, I'll grease those up real good. And then I'll be ready to mount that caliper back on uh, with the new brake pads. All right, let's talk about the rotors for a minute. We're back here at the passenger side rear uh, hub and this is my my back brake rotor while you've got your wheels off uh, in addition to checking your brake calipers and all the other parts i've already shown you want to pay particular attention to your brake rotors you want to do a visual inspection of these to make sure there's no deep grooves in them that there's no cracks in them and there's no obvious damage or warpage that you can see with your naked eye uh, those would all indicate that the the rotors need to be replaced but you also uh, while you've got your wheels off, it's a good idea to use a dial indicator and check your rotors for runout. The reason that's important is that on a disc brake system, you have a, basically a zero clearance system. So as you're running down the road, the brake pads are touching the rotor. They're just not applying any pressure to it. And so any warpage of that rotor, every time it comes around, it's going to drag on that brake and it's going to create heat and friction. Uh, this brake, the inner brake on this rotor when I took it off was crumbly and looked like it had overheated and uh, I'll show you why that is here in a second. So it causes you a lot of problems. It can cause your, your steering to shudder uh, whenever you apply the brakes. If it's on your uh, front wheel, your steering wheel will kind of shudder back and forth. Uh, if it's bad enough, it can cause your brake pedal to surge a little bit. Uh, but the, the more important thing is that it causes heat and friction, which is going to destroy your brake pads. It has a potential to destroy your brake caliper. And if it's severe enough, uh, it can overheat your brake fluid, which will blow the top off your master cylinder, and it can cause you uh, major issues. So while you've got your wheels off, while you've got everything off, Go ahead and take the time to check these out, and if they need to be replaced, go ahead and replace them. Now, you can have brake rotors turned, what they call turning the rotor, which takes the warpage out of them, and most people, when they do a, a passenger car, they do that every time because uh, it just makes your brake system operate better. These large rotors like this, it's hard to find a place to do them, and if you do, it usually costs more to have the rotor turned than it does to just buy a new rotor. Uh, when I checked around, it was $90 to have uh, these brake rotors turned, and it's $65 to buy a new one. So if, if you have one that's bad, you're probably better off just to buy a new one and uh, take the old one to the scrap metal yard. So I know that was a long explanation, but I think this is an important component of the vehicle, and I want to uh, provide you a good explanation of your rotor system and how to go about inspecting it. So you're saving yourself thousands of dollars by doing this brake job yourself. Uh, an RV brake job like this can be upwards of $3,000 or more, and you're gonna do it for a few hundred. So spend a few dollars and buy some tools that you need. I bought this little uh, machinist dial indicator. It was 15 bucks at Harbor Freight, and then a little magnetic base that it sits on. I think it was $12. 
and I'll be able to use these for other projects and plus I'll be able to inspect, inspect these rotors uh, the way they should be. So what I've got in here is that I've got the magnetic base sticking to the axle over there. I've got the rod on the dial indicator contacting the brake rotor about a quarter inch down from the uh, outside edge of it and I've got it set to zero right now. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see this. Hopefully it's getting a little dark out here. So hopefully this will show up. All right. So each one of these lines on this dial indicator is a thousandth of an inch. And uh, the tolerance on a brake rotor is no more than two and a half thousandths. Uh, some, some places say no more than two thousandths, but absolutely no more than two and a half thousandths of an inch of run out. So what that means is that needle won't, shouldn't move more than two of those lines or at the most two and a half of those lines as I rotate this axle 365 degrees all the way around. So I've got it up against there. The outside ring of this indicator uh, spins and so I set it to zero and it's on the low spot of the rotor right now. So as I spin the rotor, I'm turning it around right there is my high spot and now it starts going back down so if i back up to that spot right there i've got about five thousandths of an inch of run out in this rotor uh, which is about twice what the allowable spec, spec is that's not something that i would have been able to see with my naked eye i could feel it dragging on those brake pads when i put the new ones on here but uh, if it were any less than that i may not have felt it but it still would have been a problem In my next video, I'm actually going to show how to replace that rotor, but for right now, I wanted to finish this video up by showing the installation of the brake caliper and the brake. So the new inner brake pad gets slid inside of the mount that's on the RV, and then the outer brake pad uh, is held onto the caliper. And that caliper just, once you get everything greased up, the bottom goes in and then it rotates down in place. And then the last thing you have to do is take that retainer and that spring and grease them up really well and then they go back in the bottom. Now pay attention as you put these in. It took me a minute to get this lined up but once that retainer goes in it really shouldn't take a lot of force to get it in place. You're probably going to have to tap it with a hammer just a little bit but you shouldn't have to beat on it. If you have to beat on it it's way too tight and uh, you may need to uh, make some adjustment there but I slid it in about halfway by hand and then you can see I've got a really small ball peen hammer and I just tap it uh, in there real lightly. Now once it's in it's just a matter of putting that one bolt back in and tightening it up and of course on mine I have to to reconnect to the brake line because I replaced those brake lines but if you didn't take the brake line loose then that'll have this job wrapped up for you. All right, so there you go. I hope this video has given you the knowledge and skills you need to inspect and maintain your brake system so that you can get a lot of miles down the road safely with no breakdowns. If this helped you out, please like and subscribe and add a comment. Watch the rest of the videos in this series. Uh, if you want to see how to replace that rotor, keep watching. And especially video number four, uh, the upgrade of the Hydro Boost. I think that's a video that's worth watching. Thank you guys and be safe out there.